Everybody, how are you? Thank you so much for coming in to join us at our Live at Five Worship Experience. I am your host, Devanya, and I am so thrilled to have you guys here to be able to watch the service with us. You guys, we have been little worker bees over here working hard just to maintain an amazing, amazing flow of service for you guys. And we have something special this week for you guys for all of our MMCC Wilson fam. This Saturday, this Saturday, you guys, make sure you clear your schedules if you can to come on out and watch a movie with us. Yes, that's right, you heard. We are having a movie night this Saturday. But you guys, it's very, very, very imperative that you register. So if you can go up to our private group me for all of our members, make sure you click the link and register. You guys, I'm so excited about this. All of our ministers for MMCC Wilson, August 29th, September 12th, and 26th, we have our preacher's impartation with our pastor, none other than Pastor Blandon. We are going to be studying Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When I tell you I'm super, super excited, intercessors, trust me, we have not forgotten about you guys. You guys are definitely welcome. Today is a very special day because we're having a baby dedication. Woo! Miss Kashanti is getting dedicated, and we all know how important that is and how special that is and sacred. So we are super, super excited. So you guys will be able to watch that with us. And anytime during the service, if you guys feel like sewing, make sure you click on that cash app and cash app dollar sign MMCC Wilson. Right now, we are about to go into a one minute encouraging word by none other than our minister, Minister Co. Hey everybody, this is Minister Dakota here. I just wanted to take a few moments to encourage your hearts. Did you know that everybody has a past? I'm sure you've heard that before, but I want you to take into consideration this thought. Your past simply prepares you for what God has in front of you. So no matter what is behind you concerning your past, there will always be a future in Christ. He wants you. He wants to love on you. He wants to take care of your heart. It's his good pleasure to wash those things away. Do not let your past hinder you from your present or anything that God has for your future. Why would we do that anyway? Here's why. Sometimes we allow the enemy to, uh, his voice to take precedence over God's voice. But we make a decree today. We are going to silence the enemy. He can no longer make more noise in our life than God. Stay encouraged. God loves you. And so do I. Hey, make sure you join us for Live at Five. Hey guys, we miss you so much. Join us at Live at Five. 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 Be here. Live at Five. today. Our Father, we, high, we hold you to high esteem today. Father, we exalt your name. Father, we lift you up, Father. Father, we glorify your name. Father, we magnify your name. The truth of the matter is, God, you're already big. God, you're already greater. 
but God, we magnify you in our lives. God, we zoom in on how we see you. For God, there's nobody above you. God, there's nobody beside you. God, there's nobody like you. So we open up our mouths like trumpets in Zion. And God, we shout out, God, you are God. And God, all by yourself. Hallelujah. Hey. Glory. Oh, yes. oh, glory to your name. Father, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The angels bow before you in heaven and earth adore you. What a mighty God you are. What a mighty God you are. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I believe that a mighty God deserves a mighty praise. I said, I believe a mighty God deserves a mighty prayer. You are the powerful one. You are all-knowing. You are wise. You're intelligent. God, you're omnipresent. God, you know all. God, you see all. So, God, we open up our mouths and we give you glory. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Open up those mouths. Open up those mouths and let's begin to send up Judah. Let's begin to send up praise. Hallelujah. For the God that we serve is a mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you believe and you know that we serve a mighty God, I dare somebody to open up your mouth and scream right here. Hey, this is a simple song. It says, Lord, you're mighty. If you believe that we serve a mighty God, put your hands on it. Come on, I want y'all to rock with me this morning, okay? Can y'all rock with me today? Hey. Y'all ready? Hey. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Hey. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. To glory above the heavens and the earth. When I think of all you made, you made the sun, the moon, and the stars. And no praise is high enough to express how great you are. What a God we serve What a mighty God we serve Angels They bow before The mighty God we serve What a mighty God we serve What a mighty God we serve Heaven and earth the door, the mighty God we serve. Hey, say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Say, Lord, come on. If you believe it, come on. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, how is your name? Above the heavens and the earth, 
San Diego. When I think of all you made, you made the sun, the moon, and the stars. Hey, shut up. No praise is high enough to express how great you are. Everybody say, say Lord you mighty, 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 hey, say Lord you mighty, say Lord you mighty, Lord you mighty, say Lord you mighty, say Lord you mighty, say Lord you mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're hey, mighty. you're mighty to you're save. Mighty. You're mighty to you're heal. Mighty. You're mighty to you're deliver. Mighty. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lift up your heads. Lord, you're Lift your heads, oh, you Jesus. Lord, you're Until you lift it up. Lord, you're it's the King of glory. Lord, yes, the King of glory. Lord, he shall come in. He shall come in. Hey, who is this king? Who is this king of glory? He is the Lord, yeah. God's strong and mighty. He's strong and mighty. Mighty in battle. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. What a mighty God. We said, You are the mighty God that we serve. Heaven and earth the door. The mighty God we serve. Oh, no, 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 no. What a mighty God 
we serve. You are the mighty God that we serve. Angel, be bow before the mighty God. We serve what a mighty God. With your hands lifted. Who are the mighty God we serve? Mighty Come on, stay right there. Stay right there. Who are the mighty God? The mighty God we serve. He's mighty to save our life. Mighty, mighty to lift our head. He's never lost the battle of us. Mighty God we serve. He's never lost the battle. Mighty God we serve. He's never lost the battle. Said he's never lost the battle. God we Come on, say. Said he never lost the battle. Never lost battle. Hey. Said he's never lost the battle. He never lost hey. the battle. He's mighty and he never lost the battle. Never lost the battle. He's never lost the battle. Hey, said he's never lost a battle. He never lost a battle. Against depression, he'll never lose a battle. He never lost a battle. Against anxiety, he's never lost a battle. Yeah. Never lost a battle. Hey, said he's never lost a battle. Oh. Never lost this is why. This is why. Listen, our God is greater. Yeah. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than me. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. Our God, oh, no, 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 no. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. Our God, come on, sing. Sing, our God is greater. Our God is, our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher. higher than My God is a healer. healer. Awesome in power. Our hey. God. God. Our God is greater. Yeah, yeah. Our God, Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher. You are higher than any yes, my God is healer. Awesome and powerful. Power Our God. Our God. This next one says this, this, and hey. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand? And if our God, and if our God is for us, who can? Then who could ever stop us? Yeah, yeah. And if our God is yeah. for us, who can And if our God, if our God is for us, who can? And if our God is with us, then what can stand? What can stand again? Then what can stand again? What can stand again? No demon in hell can stand against us. No sickness can stand against us. No devil can stand against us. And if our God is for us, and if our God is who can? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Then if our God, who can? And if our God is with us, then what can stand? Who what can stand? Yeah. Come on, say that together with us. Hey. Then a word can stand. What can stand again? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Our God is greater. 
my God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. I got his healer. Awesome in power. I got. I got. Come on. Say, I got you. Yeah. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are. You are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. For the last time, my God is greater. Yeah, my God is greater. My God is stronger. Lord, you are higher. You are higher than any other. My God is healer. My God is healer. Awesome in power. My God. My God. My God. My God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are Lord, higher. You are higher than any other. Our God is Our healer. God is healer. Awesome, awesome in power. In power. Our God. Our God. Our God. If you know that God is mighty in battle, oh, if you know that we serve a great God, open up your mouth and give He's Him great praise. We give you glory to the great God that we serve, to the one who's never lost the battle, to the one who's never lost the case. You are the God who reigns victorious. You are the God who reigns victorious. Nothing can stand against us. Nothing can stand against us. Nothing can stop us. No, no. Nothing can stop us. No, no. If God be for us, then who could ever stop us? He's more than the world against us. He's more than the world against us. He's more than the world against us. Greater is He that's within us. Then he that's within the world, they that be with us are yeah. far more than they that be with him. We have the great God on our side, and he's fighting for you, 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 and he's fighting for you. And he's moving for you. Hey, shot. And he's moving for you. Hey, he is moving for you. He is moving for you. Heaven is backing you up now. Hey, shut up. He's putting angels on the run on your behalf. Angels are fighting for you now. There's no way we can lose. There's no way we can lose. Hey, shake. With God on our side, we won't lose. Hey, shut up on our say. With God on our side, we won't lose. With God on our side, we won't lose. I dare you victorious people who know that with the power of the Lord and with God on your side, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. He always causes us to have victory. Oh I dare somebody to shout right here. There's no way I can lose. No way I can lose. There's no way I can lose. No way I can lose. With God on my side. Hey, shut up my message. There's no way I can lose. Hey, yeah, my master. There's no way I can lose. The God that we serve. Shut up. He never lost the battle. Lift up your hands, all ye gates, and be ye up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord God, strong and mighty. He's mighty and battle. He's mighty and battle. I dare somebody to believe it right here. So begin to open up your mouth 
and shout unto God with the voice of victory. There's no way I can let And I tell you right now, the Bible says shout unto God with the voice of triumph, which means to shout unto God with the voice of victory. So even in your current situation, I dare you prophetically, when I count to three, I dare you to release a shout that's going to tear down the kingdom of Satan. I dare you to release a shout that's going to let the enemy know that I have the greater one on my side of one, two, three, come on, shout in the grace. Shout in the grace. Yeah. We are victorious. We are victorious. Somebody shout yeah. Shout yeah. I am victorious. Through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood that was shed on Calvary. It is that blood that gives me strength. From day to day, from minute to minute, from hour to hour, from second to second, and it shall never, never lose this power. Give God praise in this place. Give God praise in this place. I feel deliverance breaking out right here. I feel deliverance breaking out right here. I dare you right now. I know this is a little bit unordinary, but wherever you are, this is the time to get what you need. Because the power of the Lord is here. He's destroying yokes. He's breaking chains. He's loosing the chains of injustice. Holy Ghost, break right now. Break the yokes right now. I'm declaring victory. Victory shall be the children's prayer. Victory shall be the children's prayer. Victory shall be the children's prayer. Blow wind of God now. Blow wind of God. Destroy every oak Jesus. Destroy every oak Jesus. One last time when we're moving. I need all my victorious believers to open up your mouth and send up praise to him. Hallelujah. Everybody lift your hands. Lift your hands. And I want you to close your eyes for a moment. You serve a great God. Deliverance is available to you. You serve an awesome God. And I just want you to take some time to reflect on how great and how wonderful he is. And there are those of us who have to be pushed to that place. And that's fine and there are those of us it's much easier for you to get to that place but what I want you to do without the uh, excitement of someone hollering at you and, and the uh, music making you emotional the worship team has led us to a phenomenal place Pastor T has brought us to this place for us to acknowledge his greatness and it doesn't require a coach at this moment but however it does require the freedom of the atmosphere for you to release what is on the inside of you you're in the right place but at this point it's up to you I'm going to give you about 20 seconds to release what is in your mouth what is in your heart I need you to release it into the atmosphere one two three come on right here come on right here right here come on right here hallelujah come on release it 
Hey, glory, glory, glory. It's not about a house or a car, but it's your relationship with him. Come on. Release it. Release the sound, the sound of praise. There is a sound. There is a sound of gratefulness. There is a sound of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, release it, release it. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. 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 Hey, 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 hey. Glory. Oh. Glory. Glory. Come on. You got about 10 more seconds. Come on. You got about 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds. Ten more seconds. Come on, ten more seconds. I lift my hands in total adoration. You reign on the throne. For you are God. Can sing to you. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say, I just want to say that I love you more than you. Come on, come on. I want you to sing it loud. I love you, Jesus, right here. Sing, I love. Come on, split it into three parts. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. I just want, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you.
is the moment you show him that you actually love him more than anything. Not just a song, but this is the sentiments of my heart. This is what I feel. This is what I do. This is who I am. Sing it soft. I love you, Jesus. Sing it softly one more time. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Yes, I worship. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. is what I want to do. We're, we're scheduled to dedicate a beautiful baby, and I think this is a wonderful time uh, in this atmosphere to do that, because when you love something, you give to it. And as God has given us this wonderful, beautiful baby, come on, Rashida, given this wonderful child, this beautiful baby, we love God enough to give him, to give her back. We love God enough. Did y'all hear what I said? We love God enough to give her back. Yes, Lord. And um, as we are in this, in this time, I want God parents and friends and aunties and all that stuff. Come on up. As we, as we are in this time oh yeah, where we're cautious about touching and laying hands and all of that good stuff. I believe that this is a God-ordained moment that the Lord has allowed you, Rashida, to be in this baby girl's life. And sometimes, as parents, we can attest to the fact that we take care of children, but when we look at it the totality of it, we realize that God sent the children for us. Because the question is, where would we be if we didn't have little ones looking after us? We're looking after them, but they're really looking after us. Who would, who would you be if the little one didn't come into your life? Or see, you've taken on a great responsibility But anybody who can see the love that you have for her will be secure in the fact that, watch this, a mother's love does not only come from a birth canal, but a mother's love is attached not through an umbilical cord, but through the heart. So I challenge you as her mother. I challenge you as a mother, not just to make her life about what you didn't have, not to make her life about what, what you can give to her, but I challenge you as her, as her mother to make her life about what God has placed her here for. Look at her. She's joyful. It's a natural joy. As a mother, I know you will do everything you can to enhance that joy. Keep her smiling. Protect her. Watch over her. Cover her. As a mother, be a mother. Don't try to be a father. Don't try to do everything. Don't try to be everything because you can't and you're not. You're wonderful. You're great. Great accomplishment. Lord knows you'll make stuff happen. But at the end of the day, God has placed you in this position to anoint you as a mother just right now even as she's trying to grab at you and move around and make it a little difficult as a mother things will become difficult 
but persevere and press on. As friends, aunts, godmothers, godparents, I challenge you to not just be there during the good times and birthday parties, but I challenge you. Back when I was growing up and others were growing up, it took a village. I didn't just get one whooping. I got multiple whoopings. I got multiple talks. I got multiple punishments. Bless your heart. I challenge you as parent, godparents and aunts, friends, to consider, even you two, to consider the advice that you can give to them. Consider not just your hardships, but your joys. Because there are going to be some times where she needs to pull from your joy. There are going to be some times where she needs to pull from your joy. And as friends and as a village, God has placed you here for a particular reason. And never forget the charge that I'm giving you today. All right, come on. He said, hurry up. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I'm laying my hands on her, as you've given me a charge as a leader, as a prophet, as a pastor, I pray, Father, that the anointing that you've given me will manifest and double, triple in her life. Father, we thank you for this beautiful child. Father, we thank you for the joy that you're giving her. God, we thank you for her wonderful smile. We thank you for her active behavior. We just thank you for her beautiful eyes, which is a sign that your life and your hand is upon her. God, keep her now. Keep her health. Keep her body. Protect her from all sickness and disease. Father, we know what doctors say, and we know what the, the analysis say, but we also know what heaven says. And we know that you are able to keep her and we know that you are able to heal. Father, I decree that just because she was born with it does not mean she has to live with it. So we decree healing and we decree a long life of health and prosperity right now. I thank you and I glorify you and I magnify you. Protect her from any type of predator. Protect her from any type of individual that mean her harm. I glorify you and I magnify you. And today, I said today, God, we give her back to you. We give her back to you. Just as John baptized Jesus. As, and you came down and said you were well pleased. I pray now that you are well pleased with Kashanti Sauls. We give her name all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' great name. Come on, let's praise God for this beautiful baby. Come on, let's make some more noise for her. Hallelujah. Children are wonderful. And I'm certainly thankful that we have the opportunity to parent and to love. Thank you. Thank you, worship team. Let's give them, give our worship team a hand. Amen. Let's give our musicians a hand. I want y'all to make some noise for them because all these are new faces. I don't know. <laughs> we got a whole guest band sitting in today. I mean, everybody. But we're thankful. We're thankful for them and their excellence and their, their spirit. And uh, and uh, I know I said they're guests, but they're they're at home. They're just like one, just like us. So I'm thankful for them. Uh, let's make some noise for all of our visitors online and some in the house. We appreciate you. Let's go to Joshua five. Uh, I'm in a series called "It's More Than Sunday." Are y'all enjoying it so far? I think um, that you know. I think one day I'm gonna be like, "Y'all enjoying it so far?" And I'm gonna be afraid nobody gonna say anything. <laughs> Y'all enjoying it so far? Uh, yeah, about this series. But now nah, I'm thankful that the Lord is, is allowing us to, to go deeper into the word and uh, to grow. 
and um, by, by leaps and bounds, this, this ministry is growing spiritually, mentally, and physically. And uh, I, am, I am extremely thankful for that. Um, I want to make sure uh, that we um, um, are in lockstep with what the Spirit is saying and, and what the Spirit is doing. Um, one, of the, one of the worst places to be is, um, <laughs> how can I say this? One of the worst places to be is to be in a place where you think it's the will of God, but it's actually your will. Right, and you you think that God's hand is on it. You think that God is, you know, and it's and and you think that God did it because you prayed for it, when really God didn't do it. You just you went after it, okay. Um, and so I, I want us to to like really um, use some common sense in some areas that if you you know you have an eight hundred credit score and you got a job, um, and you get approved for a car, that, look at somebody say that's not God. Like, like, like for real, and, and let's take it another step further. You can have a 550 credit score, and you can still get approved. Look at somebody say, that's not God. Okay, there, there's banks out there willing to give you a chance, especially if you got a down payment. Okay, now what is God is when God begins to work out the details. Okay, I, I want you to hear me, is when, is when oftentimes it's, it's the things that we least give credit God for, most of the times that's God doing. Did, did y'all catch that? And, and, and I, want us to, I want us to make sure um, that we're not making decisions based upon our lust and based upon what we think uh, should be done, but we're making decisions based upon the will of God. I want you to write this question down. I asked this earlier, and uh, I want you to write this question down. And, and the question is this. If God were to leave your life right now, if he were to say, I'm not going to visit, I'm not going to be with you, I'm not going to wake up with you, when you wake up tomorrow or, or when you take this next breath, you're going to be by yourself. If God were to leave your life right now, the question that I have for you is, what would your life look like? If God were to leave your life right now, what would your life look like? Now, here, here's, 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 here's the alarming answer for some of us. I'm going to go ahead and answer for some of us. Um, some of our lives would still look the same. <laughs> I just wait. Whoa! What happened there? Yeah, just pow. Yeah, some of some of our lives would really look the same, because here's here's the deal. Again, we pray, but do we listen? You, you see what I'm saying? So so we would keep praying, but the question: Do we follow instructions? The Bible teaches us: Don't just be hearers of the word, but be what? Whoa! Some of us go to church, right? And let me tell you something. You can be in church and shake and feel and cry and, and a cold feeling come over you. You can do all of that without God. Uh, okay, I'm telling you, you can do all of that and God not be in the service. You can, you can, you can sit on it and you can, listen, you can, you, you can even come to a realization, well, man, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of feeling bad. or who, like, Because a lot of stuff that we deem as his presence is not his presence. It's just a good feeling. This is not in my notes. I'm going to get to my notes in, in a minute. But, uh, Lady Shemika, Psalm 121. I preached it this morning. And that's the psalm where the writer is saying, should I look to the hills? I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from where? My help cometh from the Lord. Now, many of us did not take the time to really break down that text. When you look at it outside of the King James Version, and look at it at all the other versions, it's in a question format. Should I look to the hills? Right? That's what the writer is saying. Should I look to the hills? He's not saying I will look to the hills from, from which cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord. No, no, no. He's saying, should I look to the hills? Then he answers it in verse 2 of Psalm 121 and says, no, my help cometh from where? From the Lord. Now, the reason why I had to, had to give you this is because if we only deem God to be the God of the hills, then he's not God. Because if you're looking up, it's indicative that you're in a valley. So the writer is, is, is saying, I'm in this low place, and he's saying, should I look to the hills from which cometh my help? But he was saying, no, my help cometh from the Lord. In other words, the same God that is in the hills is the same God that is here with me where? In the... 
Are, are you getting it? And what we have to do is break down our perception of who God really is. Now, God is not just God to you on Sunday. The same God that you experience in here on Sunday, if you have the right relationship with him, will be the same God that you experience Monday morning when you pray. So, Pastor, I, I hear you saying all this. I pray, but I don't be, I don't be feeling them. I'm saying, like y'all say, I don't be feeling them on, on, on Monday like I feel them on, on Sunday. I don't feel them throughout the week. I don't feel them on Thursday like I feel them. It must be something wrong with me. Well, I hate to be the bearer of good news, bad news, however you want to say it. Yes, there might be something wrong with you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, yes, there might be something wrong with you. Let's look at this Joshua 5. I'm going to read from the ESV version, since most of you um, got your uh, electronic devices. You can just go ahead and switch over. <laughs> just go ahead and switch over. I, I can't say nothing. I'm sitting here on a big computer. <laughs> Joshua 5. It reads like this. As soon as all the kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan to the west... <laughs> I could preach on that right there, but I'm, a, I'm a, and, and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan for the people of Israel until they crossed over. Their hearts melted and there was no longer any spirit in them because of the people of Israel. Verse 2. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make, make flint knives. Make knives. And circumcise the sons of Israel a what? This is important. A what? Second time. Meaning they had already been circumcised. If you don't know what circumcised is, it means to, to cut off excess flesh. Did y'all catch that? Y'all should already know where I'm going. It, it means to cut off excess flesh. Meaning they had already been circumcised. But God commands them again. The Lord said to Joshua, make some knives, and the sons of Israel circumcised them a, a what time? A second time. Verse 3, so Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the sons of Israel at Get Gilbeath Harlot. Verse 4, and this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. All the males of the people who came out of Egypt. All the men of war had died in the wilderness on their way, and they had come out of Egypt. Verse 5, though all the people who came out had been circumcised, yet all the people who were born on the way in the wilderness, after they had come out of Egypt, had not been circumcised. Verse 4, I mean 6, for the people of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness until all the nation, the men of war who came out of Egypt perished because they did not do what? Obey the voice of the Lord. The Lord swore to them that he would not let them see the land that the Lord had sworn to their fathers to give us a land flowing with milk and honey. Verse 7, so it was their children whom he raised up in their place, that Joshua circumcised. For they were uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. Verse 8, when the circumcising of the whole nation was finished, they remained in their places until they were healed. It's going to be good. In verse 9. And the Lord said to Joshua. Today. I have rolled away. The reproach of Egypt. From you. And so the name of that place is called. Gilgal. Mountain of flesh. That's what Gilgal. It is called Gilgal. To this day. I want you in this uh, series that I'm preaching, it's more than Sunday. I want you to look at your neighbor and shout, neighbor, neighbor. 
Say it with some power. Shout neighbor. You got too much flesh. Look, look at somebody else around you and tell them you got too much flesh. I told you it might be something wrong with you and this might be the problem. You might have too much flesh. Now, let's, let's deal with this because this, this is an atmosphere that challenges you. Not an atmosphere that makes you comfortable. Because anything that is comfortable is done grown. Did y'all catch that? Anything that is comfortable is done grow. Done. Fin finito. Finish. It's final. No more. But anything that is uncomfortable, uncomfortable has the potential to keep growing. And a lot of you are not realizing that God has you in uncomfortable seasons because that's his way of telling you you're not done growing yet. But what your flesh will do is your flesh will always misinterpret a spiritual message. If you are listening through the lens of your flesh, this is why the writer says, count it all joy. When you hit temptations and hit trials and because it's working your patience. and your pa it, it, there, there's, there's purpose behind what's going on in your life. Now, I, <laughs> I love God so much. That he does not just let things happen. I need you to write this down, and it may seem elementary to you, but write it down big so you will never forget it. Everything has a purpose. And I mean everything. Look, everything has a what? Purpose. I'm here to share this, and I'm not going to act like it's mine because it's not. I heard Bishop uh, Shante Younger preach it earlier today. And sometimes he watch, and he'll call me out if I stole his stuff. But, but he, he opened my eyes to this. Shondell, y'all know the scripture where it says, he knows the numbers of hairs on your head. He opened my eyes to it because growing up, I thought he knew how many hairs are on my head. Right? But when it was explained to me, it's not just the numbers that are on my head. God is so detailed that every time I got a haircut, that every hair that fell down, he didn't start over when it grew, but he kept counting. Did y'all catch that? Every, every piece of hair that made a, might have fallen out, might have, you might have pulled out. God didn't start over and just count the numbers that are on your head. No, no, no. He knows every single hair that has come and that has gone. That is how detailed God is. So you mean to tell me that a detailed God that is that detailed will let you go through something just because? Look at somebody and say, absolutely not. The reason why we put God the way we place God in the position we place him is because our flesh has convinced us that if God don't fix it like we think we should, he should, fix, we should fix it, then it's not going to work out. If God don't fix it like the way we think he should fix it, then he don't have a plan for it. If he don't move in the time we think he should move, then there's no reason for it. Oh, and then don't let the devil get in your mind to what you think what you are going through is because of something that you did. Because, you listen, you can be having a good day just like Job, the, the perfect upright man in us. You can be having a good day just like the good Samaritan who was on his way home and fell amongst thieves. Listen, there are some things in your life that are going to come and it's not going to be your fault. But what will be your fault is the interpretation of it. You cannot control what hits your life, but you can control how you view it. I could have ran right over into that library. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? You can't control what comes in your life. You can control it to a measure, but you can't control everything. But what you can control is how you view what comes into your life. 
And the reason why most of us are missing God throughout the week is because of our inability to have the right perception of what he's doing in our lives. Listen, I, this, this, I, I said it earlier, this is an atmosphere that's going to challenge you. There's somebody say, Pastor, going to challenge you. He going to step on your toes. He going to get your life. He going to seem like he was in your conversation earlier this week. He going he gonna to do all X, Y, Z. He going to do it all. But the question is, what are you doing? Because I can't be more committed to your growth than you are. Did, did y'all catch that? You, I, can, I cannot be com- com- more committed to your growth than you are. Because then you know what that becomes? It becomes witchcraft. I become your witch and not your pastor. Because I'm trying to make you do something that you don't want to do. I can't control who you hang out with. I can warn you. I can, I can, I can, I can, I can warn you who you hang out with. Because a lot of you, a lot of you are in the middle of the ocean, hanging with people that can't swim, and none of y'all can swim, and y'all all fighting over the same life jacket. Oh, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You fighting over the same life jacket, none of y'all can swim, but y'all called it a, a, a party because you got Bacardi and Hennessy out there. But you're drowning in life. Since, since when did we turn our, our places of where we're drowning in life into celebrations and parties? All because we done surrounded ourselves with like-minded people who, who So what your challenge with on Sunday means nothing throughout the week because it's canceled out by voices. You guys your neighbor say it's too much flesh. Listen, you, listen, this is, gonna, this is an atmosphere. We're going to challenge you here. I'm going to challenge you here. You, listen, you're not going to live any kind of way and not be challenged to change. If you are living the way you're living, it's because it's your decision. It's not because you don't know a better way. I'm, 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 okay, let me move on because cause somebody not mad yet. Here's a, here's what, was, what was happening is, in the, in the backdrop is, is that God has brought the children of Israel to a place. And he, and he tells them in, 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 in verse 4 that he brought them out of Egypt. And he's brought them out of Egypt. They've, they've, they've already wandered through the wilderness. We're past that. These are the ones, these are the children of the ones who died off from the wilderness. And he said, now when they were in the wilderness, they got circumcised. When they were born, because that's, that's what they were supposed to do. Too much flesh. But now he said, now that I brought them into another place, I need them circumcised again. Listen, some of you have not realized that this circumcision is an ongoing process. That God will keep cutting. Ah, I feel like running. Look at somebody say, God will keep cutting. To get the flesh out of the way. How committed are you? This is where I really want to get to. How committed are you to obey his word? How committed are you to grow outside of Sunday? How committed are you? Because some of us on our jobs and in our neighborhoods and our families are just known as nice people and not believers. Oh, I know so-and-so. That's a nice person. How committed are you to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ? Or are you guilty of doing to God what people have done to you? Getting with God just because he can do something for you. And then we're the same people who get mad because we get in relationships and be like, they was only with me because of what I could do for them. But we reciprocate that to God. You're not really saved until you go through hell 
and God does not hear you, but you can say, I'm going to serve him anyway. You, listen, can I tell you something? I got another question for you. I'm challenging you. If God were to stop, quote unquote, blessing you, would you still serve him? If you were to stop, quote unquote, seeing the benefits of coming to church, would you still come? Would you still meet him? Would you still worship him? Would he still be good? Would you still pray? If not, you're not here for relationship. You're here for socialism. This is what I always do. This is what, this is, this is what we do. We come to church on Sundays, right? This is why a lot of people are having a hard time coming at five instead of ten. Bang! Boom! Yes, he did. It's why we struggle. But you know what gets me? We Listen, listen. We don't struggle to readjust our schedule to do whatever our flesh wants us to do. Let somebody now tell your Pokemon head to get ready to go on a, on a trip and you ready to go. Where are we going? Got your Pokemon ball in there. Where are we going? <laughs> Y'all pray for me. We got somebody say, pray for pastor. It's medicine. I got to get it down the best way I know how. Commitment. Here, here's, here's, here, here it is. Here it is, big court. They were circumcised one time. He brought them out and said, look, I need another commitment for you. Because anytime you cut something when it heals, there's a scar. And the scar is a reminder. There's a difference between a scar and a wound. And a lot of you, you think they're scars when they're really wounds. Wounds are still open and they still hurt. And if you are not careful, a wound can be covered up by a scab. And a scab is not always an indication that it's healed. You think because you start scabbing, anybody ever scrape their knee or scrape their arm or something? And, and especially when you was little and you're just curious and you start scabbing and what happens? Start bleeding all over again. You realize it was a wound under the dry stuff. And some of you in your lives have been cut, and you thought you were healed because it was scabby, but it was still a wound. They got somebody say, wait for the scar. A scar is an indication that it's healed. It's closed. Touch it. Poke at it. It's not going to hurt, but it will remind you of what happened. Y'all good? He said, I, I want you to cut again. They cut one time. Meaning you, okay, what does that mean to you? You, are, you done already got saved. Uh, have, most of us already got filled, some of us. Already got filled with the Holy Ghost. What, what does that mean? Renew. Somebody shout, do it over again. Do it over again. We will renew our Netflix we, re we will renew Apple Music. We will renew Hulu. We, we will renew all these, all these subscriptions and all this stuff. But we won't renew our commitment to Christ. Oh, 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 we even, we even hate when we got to renew our tags. I'm about to come down somebody road real quick. I hope somebody say amen when I say this. We Listen, we, we renew our tags every year. Taxes and everything. Got to pay. Every year, got to pay taxes. Go stand in the line and renew them. And we complain and we fuss. But look at your neighbor and say, we do it. We complain because there is a price to pay every time we renew. And the problem is, is we will not renew our spiritual relationship because we don't want to pay the price. Look at somebody say, you got to pay to renew. It's free to renew. 
receive, but you're going to have to pay to renew. This is what he said. He said, look, I I, God brought us out. We need, to, we need to start cutting some stuff. Why does God keep bringing you out and you don't cut? You don't cut people? What, where did y'all get that from? Where did y'all get that from that the only time you cut people is, 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 is when you're going into the new year? That's why they cut you before you cut them. Because you don't renew at the right time. Slow down, sir. The issue is, is, he said, listen, I need, you, I need you to cut this stuff off because if not, some of the residue of the wilderness will still be on them. Here's what God had to work through. Rashida, here's what, here's what God had to work through. He made the children of Israel a promise. And because of their inability to hold fast to the promise, y'all watch this, because of their inability to trust the process of the promise, they ended up in Egypt. And so now God looking at them like, you in a place where you ain't even have to be. Not Not because of your position, but because of your mindset. Because the Bible even said in Exodus that the more Pharaoh pressured them, the more they grew. So you mean to tell me that you Israelites outnumbered the Egyptians but never had the mindset to take over the Egyptians? Which is why our grandparents told us to stop dating people who didn't go to church. Oh, y'all, y'all want to talk to me. Which is why, which is why our parents told, uh, 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 they don't believe in holiness like we believe. Because nine times out of ten, when you go into their camp, you're not going to take over. You're going to start acting like them. Children of Israel. You were God's chosen people. You had the opportunity to, 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 to help convert the Egyptians. But instead, you started acting like them. You started working for them. You were in bondage to something you had the uh, uh, potential to take over. So God had to work through that. Then God said, all right, I've heard and I've seen it. Enough is enough. I'm bringing them out. Moses, go get them. Moses, go get them. Brings them out. And, you know, you'll know the the whole Red Sea and the plague and all that. Now they're in the wilderness. Three-day journey. God said, "I I got a land for them where they will never have to fight again. I got a land that I'm going to give to them. Did y'all catch this? He said, I'm going to give it to them. So now they get over there in the wilderness. They didn't start complaining, Karina. They woke. They they, they, they woke, Karina. They they woke. They started challenging God. They started challenging Moses. Oh, Moses, you done brought us out here to die, didn't you? You are in a bad place when your slavery is your security. You're more comfortable in a relationship being cheated on than you are to live a single life by yourself. You are more comfortable, and I hope somebody listening to me hears this. You are more comfortable sitting in the church dying spiritually because you were born in that church than to get up and go. But I got a problem with people. Who love hearing Pastor B preach. But won't come to be pastored. Because of your slave mentality. You stay connected to something that's actually killing you. What kind of spiritual suicide is this? in the wilderness they in the wilderness he said alright you know, we're circumcised coming out of Egypt you're in the wilderness and here's the problem Tim they stayed there for 40 years a 3 day journey I can't I, there's nothing in me Elder G 
Elder, there is nothing in me. As a truck driver, you're going to have to help me. There is nothing in me that can potentially see how they could turn a three-day journey into 40 years. Except God turned them over to themselves and blocked off the exits. Anybody want to take a guess? Too much Can I be transparent with you, Markel? There are six days throughout the week, not including Sunday, right? Six days that we try to go to get to Sunday, seven days, however you want to say it. We, we, we go through them days and try to get back to Sunday. I've learned that those six days, seven days, however y'all want to be technical, they are, they go by so fast when I'm close to God. I'm like, ooh, it's Sunday all over again. But let me tell you something. When I'm having one of them weeks, one week will seem like 65 years. I swear I didn't have three birthdays this week. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Because when you are not connected to God and you got too much flesh, it will make the journey longer than what it's supposed to be. Your trust journey is longer than what it's supposed to be because it's too much flesh. You got too many people in your ear. Your deliverance journey is longer than what it's supposed to be because there's too much flesh involved. Your poverty journey is too long because it's too much flesh in the way. I need you to lift your hands right here and say, Lord, help me get this flesh out the way. At least help me get it under subjection. Some things I can't kill, but I can't control. <laughs> oh, y'all don't know what to jump. Is this okay to y'all? Look at somebody and say, some things you can't kill. And some things you don't want to kill. But you need to control. I tell all my single people, I'm not asking God to take away your desire for sex. Because then when you get married, you're going to be looking slow. But what you can do is control your, your see, we don't, this, this, this church right here, what you look at your neighbor and say, what you can do is control it. But you can't control that sex desire if you cannot stop eating. If you have a hard time fasting, what makes you think you're going to be able to? Pastor B, you ain't called a church to a fat because you ain't do it. You cheated. You cheated. And made it look like you did it when you really didn't do it. And I know you didn't do it because the spirit revealed that you didn't do it. So why am I going to give you a test to set you up to fail? And God's the same way. Why he going to give you a man or a woman and set you up to fail? Look at somebody say, too much flesh. Listen, I don't care. Listen, you better go to the extreme measures. I am concerned about people who will put masks on, who will put gloves on, put sanitizers on, and have all this protection, but won't protect your spirit. Don't call me extra if I can't handle a kissing scene in the movie. I'm just covering my spirit. Don't call me extra if I get up because it's too much cussing. I'm covering my spirit. You all the time like, Pat, Pat, you got to watch Wilding Out. I can't handle Wilding Out because then I start Wilding Out. I'm not, listen, I'm not coming against y'all who watch it. I'm not doing, I'm not saying it's the devil. It, it ain't much, nobody watching it anymore, but <laughs> poor Nick Cannon. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not saying any of that. What I am saying is I've learned how to defend my spirit from stuff that could come in and mess me up. Oh, y'all not going to say amen right here. You'll put on condoms. To protect you from STDs and STIs 
and not get people pregnant, but your spirit man has been in every in and everybody every, and not realizing that you done got some spiritual STIs and STDs. Because even James talks about it. Your thoughts give birth to sin. Your lust, your desires, it conceives. So the only way something can conceive is it had to be impregnated by something. And then Paul picked it up and said, who hindered you? Who you been hanging out with? Who you been hanging out with? And I promise you, that's the one who got you pregnant to what you're struggling with. Who are you talking to throughout the week? What are you listening to throughout the week? What are you watching throughout the week that's jacking you up and removing you out of the presence of God? Let them call you to save. You better protect your spirit. Some stuff you can't listen to. Some stuff you can't handle. Some people you can't be around. Especially if they're the ones who introduced you to it. Now let me tell you something. Some stuff is not a sin. One, one or two things that can make it a sin is the overconsumption of it or the timing of it. I'm, I'm getting ready to hit this because the two things that, that, that some, it, I, the Lord then revealed it to me, drinking and smoking. And I ain't even talking about no cigarettes or no black of mouths. I'm talking about weed. Oh, I'm going to get to the other one in just a minute. Let me hit this weed real quick. No, not let me hit it, but let me hit on the subject of it. Let me hit it on the subject. You know, it, doc, 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 see, doc, like, it, 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 see, man, it, it, it's natural, doc. It, it come from the earth, doc. We got your neighbor say, they right. It come from the earth. But let me tell you how it came from the earth. In the Bible, when Adam and Eve sinned, the Bible said that there were certain plants that grew afterwards. Plants with thistles, thorns, and all kinds of stuff. Which means weed may not be something. It may or may not be something that God ordained you to smoke. But let me tell you something. Even Paul said in the New Testament that you ought to be sober-minded. And you are not sober-minded if you are high. You're hallucinating seeing stuff? That ain't God. Why are you smoking something that grew in sin? That grew as a result of sin? Of course you can't hear God. Oh, I ain't forgot about you drinkers. Who dress it up as casual wine and casual this and casual that. What is going to jack a lot of you up is your, is your freedom to be casual with any and everything. Jesus turned water into wine. Let's be serious right now. Let's stop it right now. Let, let's, let's deal with this right now. There was a wedding. And the Bible says that they were having a good time drinking, 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 drinking. And they were drunk. And they said they usually save the best for last. Right. Now, if you look do the context behind the story, it was a big wedding. Yeah. Which means they had to keep drinking a lot in order to get drunk. Now, Paul said this. If your stomach hurt, drink a little wine. What's the key word? Some of y'all said drink. No, no, no. The key word is what? Because the overconsumption of it will lead you to a place that God did not ordain. And Bree, if you can't handle it, look at somebody and say, stay away from it. Too much flesh. What do y'all think? Listen, let me help y'all study the Bible real quick. Where there are two or three, 
touching and agreeing in, in whose name? He will be where? The devil's the Antichrist. He mirrors everything that Christ does. So what do you think if there are two or three of you gathering together in his name? He's going to show up. But you need to agree. That's why it's easy to drink with people who like drinking. I got somebody say too much flesh. More money won't fix your problem. You know what more money will do? It will enhance your problem. It will empower you. If you, if you only got $10 right now and you're going to buy a bottle, and down in your quote-unquote sorrows in that bottle or that dime bag, what makes you think your behavior is going to change when you get $100? Look at your neighbor and say, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You got more trophies in empty bottles than you got in souls that you've won to the kingdom. Ask your neighbor, what is your soul count? How many souls have you brought to the kingdom? Oh, no, no, too much flesh. Too much flesh. So then we become needy Christians. You're needy in your hallucinations. We become needy asking, wait, can you, can you, can you? no, 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 no. God said, I'm not bringing you to another place until you cut some stuff off of you. I'm not opening another door until you cut some stuff off of you. I said it before in Isaiah. Isaiah said, go home, wash your hands. There is a responsibility on our part. God cleans our souls, but look at your neighbor and say, we got to wash our hands. It's us that's touching stuff. God ain't making us do this. Your storm ain't making you do anything. It is your perception of the storm that's driving you to do some of the stuff that you're doing. It's your perception of loneliness. It's your perception of your singleness that's driving you to do and accept anything. Because too much flesh will jack up your perception. I'm almost finished, but I'm going to hit. I got one more hard hit. It's your perception of your leader. Your leader that causes you to be distant. That causes you to be unproductive. Not, not, no, 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 no. Look at your neighbor and say, you better watch your perception. Because you'll call me Pastor B, Bishop B, whatever you want to call me. Apostle B, Rhett, whatever you want to call me. You can, listen, you can acknowledge me in title and in your heart disrespect me like none other. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. See, a lot of you skate by. I hope some of y'all watching, because this is for you too, a lot of you skate by because I don't acknowledge it. And just because I don't acknowledge it don't mean I don't know it. Because I'm not as concerned about your conversation in front of me. Oh, I'm not concerned one bit about your conversation in front of me. What I am concerned about is your conversation when I'm not in your presence. Why pastor always use this person? Why he always that? Why he always this? Too much flesh. That's, I mean, that's a little hard. No, it's not harsh because they kept questioning Moses. 
Why Moses keep? And because they kept questioning Moses, they walking around in the same spot. Didn't we see that rock a year ago? Didn't we see that rock a year ago? Didn't we see it? You keep walking past the same spot for 40 years? So what he said is, I had to let them die off. Now you sons are the ones that, that had too much flesh. I'm going to let you go to Canaan. And because you took too long, there's some people in your land right now. But don't worry about that. Before you even get to that place, I need you to cut off some flesh. It's more than, look at somebody say, it's more than Sunday. Your growth is more than Sunday. What are you going to do tomorrow when you wake up? How are you going to reach out to God? What are, what are you, what are you going to cut this week? What are you going to cut this week? Some of you are getting off social media not because of God, because of you. I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. What about what God can't? I'm, just, I'm sick of seeing so. That's the only, that was your motivation for getting off? Because what it ended up happening is if you didn't get off of God, all you're going to do is replace that, with that time with something else. I want everybody to stand. Time I ain't feel no hoop today. I want you to look at somebody and ask them this question. How committed are you to growth? How, how, how really, how committed are you to growth? Are you, are you committed enough to start cutting some stuff? That may hurt somebody else. These, these, these are grown. Grown. Me. Who, are, who can fight the process. Joshua had to go in and circumcise. And these were grown men who could have been like, Joshua, I wish you would. I didn't already went through this, bro. But they submitted themselves to the process to say, go ahead, cut whatever needs to be cut so I can get to the next place. Verse 9 says this. And I want y'all, I want y'all to, I want, listen, the, the altar is open at your seat. The altar is open here. But I want y'all to hear the verse 9 said this. God told Joshua, today I have rolled away. I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Some of them might have been born in Egypt and some of them might have been born in the wilderness. They weren't the ones working and learning in Egypt. They learned what their fathers and mothers learned in Egypt. They were products of slavery. And some of you, your mindset is a product of someone else's slavery. Too much, too much flesh. You're around people operating in too much flesh, which is why your mind is not at ease, which is why you don't have peace. Which is why you keep smoking because you're looking for something. You keep drinking because you're looking for something. You keep having sex because you're looking for something. You keep crying because you're looking for something. You're looking for something. Those of you watching me, you're looking for something. And the Lord said, you'll find it as soon as you cut the flesh. And he said, I'm rolling it away. I've been praying and I said, Lord, where do you want, where do you want this ministry to go? Where do you want these people to go? And he said, I want you to remember what you taught them the other night. Be fast, faithful, available. Be servants, be teachable. And he said, I need y'all to move fast. Because you got to make up some time from when you were wandering in the wilderness. Jamaica, how much time are we going to spend preparing and arguing versus being on vacation? And enjoying where we were preparing to go. I said, no, I need y'all speeding up. 
I need you to go ahead, block out who you need to block out. I need you to go ahead, recommit yourself back to, to, to even if we can't be in the building, recommit yourself back to studying, going over the lives. Because I promise you there's something I said today that when you go back and listen to it, you're going to be like, I didn't hear that. Study to show thyself what? Approved. You're asking for stuff that you have not studied yet. We just use that scripture as a scripture to those getting ready to preach. No, because a lot of us have got approved for cell phone contracts and then read that small print. And when we take our uh, uh, Pikachu heads in there and try to upgrade, they be like, you can't upgrade. Your contract ain't, what contract? The one you signed and didn't pay attention to. Are y'all catching this? Listen, I have to, I have to be the way that I am because I am so committed to your growth. But I need you to be just as more committed, just as committed, if not more committed than I am. I need you to get on this live, not for numbers sake, but for appetite sake. When this church opened back up, I need you to come here, not so we can say, Doc, we church it, but for appetite sake. Don't let me cook and you don't eat. I don't like what they, no. It's not going to be a name it and claim it service, a, a, a sermon every Sunday. But it's going to be how can you get better throughout the week? And when you get better, you can name and claim whatever you want. I'm going to open this altar. I haven't done it in, in months. But it's open today. I, I prayed and I got clearance. And those of you watching, I'm, I'm fine with whatever uh, 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 blowback people got. I, I, whatever. I prayed and I, was, I said, God, what do you want? He said, allow my people to come back to the altar. So if you're in here and you're saying, Lord, I got some stuff I need to cut. I want you to come down to this altar. I want you to come down to this altar. I want you to come down to this altar. If you're in here. And you say, I want to come to the altar, but I'm, I'm just, that's cool. God can meet you right where you at as well. He can meet you right where you at as well. But the altar is a place where things are burnt up. I want you, I may or may not touch you, they may or may not touch you, but we're going to intercede for you. I want you to lift your hands up. I want you to close your eyes all over this building. And what I want you to do is I want you to begin to think in your mind right now as I'm talking. Think in your mind the things that you need to cut. Confess to the Lord in your mind the things that you need to cut. What is it that I need to cut? What do I have an addiction to? What am I struggling with? What, 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 what is the thing I know I'm not supposed to be doing but I end up doing? What, what, is it? what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Even those of you at home, make your altar at home. What is the thing? I got too much flesh in the way. I love my friends to pieces. But my friends are empowering my bad habits. I love my sisters. I love my family to pieces. But they are my detriment right now. God, help me to cut them off. Help me to cut it until I can get stronger to help them. But right now, God, this is me and you. This is me and you. This is me and you. This is me and you, God. I need you to pray. I need your voices when I count to three. As you're thinking in your mind, I need you to release that sound. That sound of, I need help. That sound of deliverance. That sound of freedom. Because some wounds in your life are going to turn to scars. Yeah. On the count of three, I need you to lift your voice. One, two, three. Come on, lift your voice and worship. All over the altar. Come on. Come on. Come on, keep worshiping. Whatever it is, out of your mouth, say, God, help me cut it. Help me cut the extra. Help me cut the things that don't matter. 
Help me cut it. 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 I need to get to that place in you. But I got too much flesh. It's messing up my perception. It's messing up how I see things. It's messing up how I view things. Help me, God. Help me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord. I connect now. I connect now. I connect now. I connect now. In the name of Jesus. The struggle is over. The struggle. Come on, keep worshiping. In your seat, keep worshiping. At this altar, keep worshiping. Release it, let it go. You at home, you at home, let those tears flow. Let those tears flow. Let them flow. Let them flow. struggling with this. This was a lot to digest today. It's a big challenge. God, how, how am I supposed to cut a lot of stuff that I've gotten comfortable with? <laughs> That's a challenge. Cutting what you are comfortable with. Some stuff we didn't even think was that bad until we looked and saw, jeez. Some of us react out of hurt and pain because somebody messed up your relationship. Now you are numb and you don't care about messing up somebody else's. When the old you had standards, you wouldn't even, you, no, uh-uh. Some of us wouldn't even, wouldn't even fathom us being in the position we're in right now. But because too much flesh we're not sensitive enough. We got too much flesh, Bree. We're not sensitive enough. The, real, the Holy Ghost don't just let us shout and jump and speak in tongues, but he will convict us. He say, hey, you too far out there. Come on back. You, not, not, now you know you shouldn't have said that. The real Holy Ghost is, not only shouldn't you say that, but hey, 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 get them thoughts together before it come out your mouth. I need y'all to say amen right here. Listen, when I say this, the Holy Ghost will let you forgive people yeah. who didn't ask for it. Holy Ghost will let you accept forgiveness. Holy Spirit will free you up. Too much flesh, my kid. Don't let people say you too saved. What does that mean, too saved? 
I'm striving to be more like him. Ain't no such thing as two saying. My identity is in him. You read your Bible all the time. So what am I supposed to do? Read comic book? Every time I turn around, you praying and every time, this this, this going to hit a lot of y'all. Every time I turn around, you're always in church. But can I tell you something? I thank God because the church has kept me out of the obituary sometimes. Can I tell you something? The church has kept me out of the busted paper sometimes. I was in his house in safety. I'm just, I want you. I don't know when this is going to end. I'm praying. Please believe me. I'm constantly talking to Pastor T. I'm constantly talking to Elder G and talking to Pastor Aaron and all kinds of people. When are we going to come? I am praying, y'all, to try to figure out when we're going to come back to church. I know it's hard. I know it's hard watching from home. And, and I, I know, but, but listen, I have to teach you that it's not just limited to being in the building. But those of you watching, even you watching right now, how committed are you to set aside the time and to worship the Lord? And not worship the Lord in your bed, but to get up and actually worship the Lord and feel his presence. Raven, here's the problem, and I know why a lot of you have the problem. Because in this church, we don't have to invite his presence because he lives here. The problem is, every time in our house, we have to open and invite him in our house. When he should live there too. Whenever we have some, some guests come up, we try to tidy up living room and bathroom. Throw everything in the room, close the door, they don't need to be in there anyway. It's the same thing. We have a hard time getting in the service because God don't live in our house. We have to invite him. Your house ought to be a sanctuary. Lift your hands and say, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Oh, God. Lord, prepare my house to be a sanctuary. Prepare my car to be a sanctuary. Prepare my workplace to be a sanctuary. Wherever I go, hey, let it be a sanctuary. And Courtney, in every sanctuary, there's an altar. A place where you lay stuff down. I'm challenging you this week. I'm challenging you this week. Find somewhere in your house, your room, find in your car, wherever, and make that place your sanctuary. And invite him this last time and say, God, come on in. And this time, bring your stuff and stay here. Don't leave out. Stay here, God. So when I have a rough week and I can't get to church, I know where to go. When I'm frustrated in my mind and I feel like smoking and feel like drinking, I know where to go. I know why you do it. Because you weren't born drinking. You weren't born smoking. You weren't born having sex. Somewhere down the line, you used it as a substitute to make you feel better or to make you feel numb or try to get you through this season. But I want you to hear me and hear me well. It was a substitute and not the real thing. When we were in school, we were never our real selves when substitutes came in the room. We always acted out. But when the real teacher was in the room, we wouldn't even do some of the stuff we would do with a substitute. And the reason why in our lives we are not ourselves, because we got too many substitutes. That's it. Today is the day where the real thing comes in. The real joy, the real peace. All these substitutes using conversations because you're bored. 
DMing people back that you know don't even deserve your time. The real thing is his presence. But his presence will not exist where there's too much flesh. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this last thing. I want you to hear this and hear this good. I want you to hear this and hear this good. Go back and read it. Go back and read it because I think it was maybe verse 7 or verse 8. Let me give it to you. Where he said, where he said in, 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 verse, in, verse, in verse 8, verse 8, when the circumcised, when the cutting was happening in the, in, in the whole nation, Jay, they stayed in their houses until they were healed. Did y'all catch that? Until they were what? Healed. God is cutting you. And some of you have started cutting, but you didn't stay until you were healed. You went out, got infected. You opened up, you showed your wounds too early. When you were in the house getting healed, God was giving you revelation. He was giving you ideas, but the revelation and ideas were not meant for you to move right now. They were meant for you to move when you were healed. And so now what happens is you end up writing a book and having a relapse. You end up, you end up doing, you end up doing uh, t-shirts and end up doing YouTube segments and all this stuff and having a relapse. Because you moved before you were healed. You end up trying to get in relationships and relapse. End up trying to start businesses and relapse because you moved before you were healed. Can I tell you something? See, healing takes time. And we feel like we don't have it. Because we're getting older, stuff is happening. And then we'll get to the point where we like, okay, all right, all right, I'm stable, I'm, I'm cool. And then we see somebody else with what we want. Like I said, oh, shot. Lift your hands and say, I'm going to stay in the house. Get high, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get healed. Get healed. Get healed. Get healed before trying to help somebody else. Get healed. You can't offer a piece of yourself when they need all of you. I love y'all. I love this entire church. I've given my literally blood. I've bled in this church. I've given sweat, tears. I've given to this church. But I've had to get to the point where I had to pull back and say, I'm no good to y'all if I'm not good to myself. As much as I want to walk with everybody and counsel everybody and, 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 and be there for everybody, uh, gee, I, I had to realize I had to heal from some stuff myself. And I had to stay in the house. And you will get to the place, if you are not careful, where you move before you are healed. And you got to start the process back all over again. Stop busting the stitches. Stop Stop Every time God brings us to a place of healing where we can see the light. Somebody in their emergencies. Somebody in their emergencies makes us get to the place where we move before our time. When you, hey, God, I speak to you now individually that the Lord is causing you to get back to the place of healing. You will not help before you heal another day. I said another day. I need your commitment again. I need your commitment to heal again. 
The emergencies of everybody else have distracted you from your healing. Such a wonderful presence. If I were you, I would close my eyes and take advantage of it right here. I would take advantage of it. I would take advantage of it. God is here. There's a sweet anointing. There he is. In the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down. A burden. One more time, there is. Sing it for anointing. There it is. In the atmosphere. And this is what I want us to do. I want us to get ready to sow. And uh, I, I, I've been praying about a whole lot. I've been bombarding heaven and asking God for strategy on this next place and where we're going. And I even told us uh, last week that the Lord was uh, pushing us to a different place in our giving. And I told you I was going to be more intentional about our appeals and giving and how we give. And uh, I was in the shower and I was praying today and the Lord led me to this. And um, I told the Lord I will not question him. I will ask and not question. And uh, today I sowed a seed earlier and I'm going to do it again today. Uh, I want everybody who is able, um, and when I say able, I mean you have it. Not able as in you're willing or able as you can make sense of it. I need, I need everybody to sow a seed, hear me, sow a seed into the ministry for your life. And I've said it, I've said it, and I've said it time and time again at how the prophet will ask, but this is so your life can overflow. I'll eat, but you're going to overflow. Touch yourself and say, I will overflow. This, listen, I don't want you to hear me. I've, I've, I've been at this place before, and every time I'm at this place, 
Uh, so me, I, I'm at this place where, where when God says it, it's literally like a, a full balloon full of water with a pen and you just, and it'll pop. This atmosphere and this time we are in is so potent that you can do one thing and stuff will begin to pop on your behalf. Hear me. It is happening right now. I want everybody who is able, I'm going to do it. I want everybody to give $100 today. If you don't have it, and when I say you don't have it, I'm not talking about, you know, I got it. No, no, no. I'm talking about you don't have it. I want you to give as close as you can to it. Hear me. I want you to give as close as you can to it. I'm not talking about your rent, money, and light bill money. That's not what I'm talking about. The Lord, listen, the Lord speak to you and say, give it out of whatever you do it. I'm talking to those of you who got savings, those of you who got extra money, all of that. I'm talking to you. Not because we need to meet a budget, but because we need to meet a mandate. Hallelujah. Torrell, God, Pastor T, God is not going to fail us. Did you hear what I said? He is not going to fail us. Lift your voice and say, God will not fail us. And Deacon Rico, Deacon Sutton, not only will he not fail us, but he won't let us look stupid. He will not let us look crazy, Deacon. Did y'all hear what I said? He will not fail us. Nor will he make us look crazy. I felt that. He's not going to fail us. Y'all just do me this one favor. I want you to do me this one favor. And this is only if you believe it. This is only if you know it to be true. I want you to throw your head back as loud as you can and shout, he will not fail us. Whatever he promised, he will not fail. Whatever he told you, he will not fail. He won't renege on it. He won't go back on it. His word will not return unto him void. Whatever he said, he will, hey, he will not fail us. Right now is the right now is the atmosphere for you to move. Right now is the atmosphere. Right now is the atmosphere. I need to send it right now. I know sometimes we wait until after service and y'all do great in giving. But right now, while the water is troubled, right now. Right now. If you gotta use card, do it right now. Right now. Where you at? Come on. Do it right now. Right now, right now. We do good in releasing seeds, but let's work on our timing. Move, 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 He won't fail us. He won't fail us. He won't fail us. This is an intentional seed going to an intentional God for an intentional harvest. This is purposeful. You hear me, Bree? Purposeful. Purposeful. 
Those of you who only have five and ten, don't say only. No, no, no. You present it to God as your best. 20, 30, 90, whatever it is. Present it to God as your best. I won't be embarrassed of this because this is my right now. It's not my forever. You know what I'm saying? This, this ain't my right now. It's just my right now. It's not my forever. I won't be embarrassed of my seed. Because that means I'm going to be embarrassed of my harvest. I'm not embarrassed. You're watching. Sow it. Give it. Don't let this be the time you log off. This is a big part of worship right here. How much do you love him? How much do you trust him? To say, this don't make sense. But here you go, God. Tears are going to come down my eyes, but here you go, God. You won't fail me, nor will you make me look crazy. You won't. You won't. You won't. I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging you to not miss any moment in this series. I release a spirit, I ask the Lord to release a spirit of, of, of worship and a renewed commitment over this house throughout the week. I want you all to do something, and it may seem crazy and look crazy, but I just want you to reach up. Grab a piece of it. Just reach up. Take it with you. Grab a piece of this freedom. Take it with you. Take it with you. A hallelujah. Take it with you. Hold it close. Because this week is going to be different. This week is going to be different. I decree it and I declare it to you listening and watching. I want you to type it. This week shall be different. I don't know what it is about it, but it shall be different. It shall be different. A peace of God this week. Good news this week. Good mental mindset this week. Good stability this week. It won't be easy, but I heard the Lord say, it will be good. Whoa, glory to his name. We love you. We love you. And I encourage you not to miss a moment of this series. It's more than Sunday. God bless you. God, when I tell you this word was phenomenal, I challenge you to go back, study, dissect this word. I challenge you, this series is different than all the other series because it's going to require you to do some homework. But I promise you, it's going to be all worth it because it's way more than Sunday. If you guys want to be a blessing to this ministry, make sure you cash app, dollar sign, MMCC Wilson. We love you. Make sure you guys join us again Wednesday for our Wednesday night uplift until we see you guys again.